past couple of years, we've been working closely with Jersey City to first complete a bicycle master plan and then to implement that plan through the design and construction of a network of protected bike lanes. We pride ourselves as an administration on being very, very quick uh, with decisions and quick with implementation. And our bike master plan is a good example of that. When we started developing the bike master plan, the approach that we set out with was an all ages and all abilities approach. And what that means is that Anyone of any age and any ability should be able to ride in a protected bike facility or any sort of safe, comfortable bike facility at any time of the day. It is quite a change that we've had over the last couple of years. Um, I actually remember a ninth annual ward tour that we do every year and at that point the mayor made promises about a bike master plan being passed and a lot of this infrastructure getting built and um, they've, they've lived up to their word. So the master plan process included a lot of public engagement. We did a lot of bike riding with residents, getting their input. We did several meetings and workshops. We had a large demonstration project on Bergen Avenue where we tested out a configuration. The first protected bike lane went in on Grove Street, um, actually before we even finished the bike master plan, right in front of City Hall is very symbolic. The goal here is to create a citywide network that links every corner of the city together that people can travel safely on the streets, not feel threatened. The power of the quick build approach is that we're able to implement so much bike infrastructure by using low cost materials without compromising on the impact or the quality of the, of the infrastructure that we're delivering. So in just over a year, we've implemented about 10 miles of protected bike lanes throughout the city. And that's almost a quarter of our goal for the entire proposed bike network, which is 46 miles of protected bike lanes. Uh, we've designed the first protected intersections, I believe, in the state of New Jersey, of course, the first in Jersey City. And so the Grove Street bike lane is a two-way protected bike lane on one side of the street and then where it intersects here with Brand Street are directional lanes. So to get from the directional lanes into the north-south Grove Street um, two-way lanes is complex. It was a challenging design that we had to develop and come up with, but we think we resolved all the issues while also making it much safer for pedestrians. If you think about where we're standing right now, um, I think that if we went through the normal process, absent of COVID, it would have been very, very hard to take away lanes, implement the protected bike lanes here, have the restaurants expand. Um, it would have been a several years process. Because of COVID, we implemented it, uh, we worked with the community on it, and I think by and large, people would say this has been a huge success. I also think that it's great that, that the pandemic didn't slow down this process. The more I'm out using the bike lanes, the more people that I see using them. In this time also we're seeing more and more the people doing delivery on bicycles are, are taking advantage of the infrastructure as well, which is great. This is the old Montgomery Street bike lane, which was always substandard in terms of its width, and while nice to have, not a very comfortable place to ride. Well, on my left is the new protected bike lane, which is much wider and uh, provides a much more safe experience for riders. Because of the material used for the initial bike lane, the green here, it would take a lot to grind this out and compromise the pavement. So given that this is a quick build project, we just left it in. Um, and so there you can see this remnant of what used to be. Now it serves as the buffer between the much wider protected bike lane and the parked cars. The way that we've used our design to increase representation in our bike infrastructure is by using ponytail bike markings to increase the representation of women and girls who want to bike and who can then see themselves represented in the infrastructure. exciting to go from uh, no protected bike lanes to a whole network that's emergent uh, around the core of the city. The smiles on kids faces when they're riding in bike lanes pretty much says it all. They feel safe and you know it's 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 great. It's really great. We look forward to 2021. We have some big things in mind as well integrating a little bit more of the north and the southern corners of the city so you can get more of the north uh, south corridors and uh, they integrate more easily with east-west. We're really looking forward to both expanding our bike network, but also improving upon the types of materials we're using and the types of barrier elements we're using so that cycling can feel even more comfortable and we can achieve our goal of becoming one of the best cycling cities in the nation.